Welcome back to another episode of Out to Lunch. I'm your host, Alex Susco, and today we are on the state fairgrounds for the second year in a row, previewing some of the new items that will be coming to the fair this year. So we're gonna visit a couple different vendors and talk to them about how they came up with the ideas for the new items, what exactly they are, and then of course, give them a try for you and hope to give you some good recommendations on what to try when you come out to the fair this year. So let's check it out. Now I'm standing here in Bridgman's next to Crystal, who's gonna tell me a little bit about this uh, new item that she's placed in front of me here. So uh, what, what, what have you put in front yeah. of me here? This is Bridgman's Grey Duck Sundae. So it's made with a premium Bridgman's black licorice ice cream. We have a marshmallow cream, crunchy marshmallows, whipped cream, and a cherry on top. Awesome, well it looks delicious. Uh, How did you come up with the idea for it? So we are really famous for our black licorice ice cream. Um, we have people that drive hours to get here just to eat this flavor. And it's got this like gray color to it. Minnesota is famous for being the only state in the country that refers to it as duck duck gray duck instead of duck duck goose. And so we thought what's more Minnesota than Bridgman's and duck duck gray duck, it seemed like the perfect fit for a name. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm gonna give it a try here. If you like black licorice, you'll love it. If you don't, you're going to say, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that's our common oh, yeah. response, yeah. That is really good. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. I, I do like um, black licorice in doses. The yeah. super dark stuff I don't like, but yeah, as an ice cream, that works really well. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So where can people find you at the fair? We are on the corner of Judson and Liggett, right across the street from the Coliseum. Great, all right, Crystal, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming in. All right, now we're here at O'Gara's. I'm standing next to Dan O'Gara himself, and uh, he's got a new item uh, to show me here. He's placed it right here. So Dan, what am I looking at here? This is an item that we served at the restaurant for many, many years, and it was our number one selling appetizer, and we're finally bringing it to the fair. So it's a, it's a, a Reuben egg roll, so it's got corned beef, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese in, in the roll, and then we've got our, I mean, it was my grandpa's recipe from the 40s on the Thousand Island dressing. Wow, nice. So you said you had this for some time at the uh, Rick at the and restaurant. Mortar location. Yes. Um, how did you come up with the idea for it? You know, we were playing around and we make our own corned beef, so when they were slicing the corned beef, there's, there was scraps and trimmings from slicing and we were trying to figure out what to do with it. So one of the cooks came up with the idea of, of let's put it in an egg roll and we, we did it and it's been a hit ever since. So we're excited, they're, they're hand rolled, it's all great ingredients and great. They're, gonna, they're gonna be good. All right, well I'm gonna give it a try here. Yeah. You gotta have the dip, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> Oh wow. Yeah, and the dip is a must. Yeah. That yep. Complements that really well. Yeah, and there's just a ton of flavor, like a Reuben, you've got the sauerkraut, corned beef, and the Swiss cheese, so it's it's a ton of different flavors, yeah. but it, it just really works well together. Yeah, and I've uh, I've always been a fan of Reubens, but I haven't ordered them that much to be honest. I'm always uh, reminded how good they are when yeah. I when I try them and yeah, what you put together is really fantastic. So. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you at the fair? So we're uh, on the corner of Dan Patch and Cosgrove. We're just inside the main gate on Snelling Avenue. All right, great. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you at the fair. Standing here with Mike Brennan from Lulu's Public House. You may recognize him from last year's show also. Uh, he presented with, to me a large variety of great stuff last year, and I'm looking at a bunch of good stuff here. Why don't you give me the rundown of uh, what you've placed in front of me here? Sure. Uh, here we've got our hot dogs. This is a all beef uh, hot dog dipped in corn batter, uh, cornmeal batter, and then rolled in minced up uh, tater tots with cheddar cheese and onion, deep fried. And over here we've got our Betty, uh, 
Betty and Earl biscuit with a uh, two chicken tenders and a pimento jalapeno spread on, on the biscuit. Great. So um, how do you guys come up with these ideas for uh, these new items? Well, this was a play on uh, the Betty and Earls that we did last year. We had two items last year, the Betty and Earls, that went over real well. So we decided to do something extra with that. This was actually a, a woman that sent a suggestion to one of the restaurants. That's something she did at home and wanted to know if we wanted to try it. We did, and it's uh, turned out pretty good. Great. And uh, just quickly here, uh, what are these drinks you got for me? This is uh, this is our electric Empress. This is uh, it's uh, sour beer, it's aged uh, three years in oak cask with 4,000 pounds of plums, and it uh, pours and tastes kind of like a light, well, light, light wine. And this this one here, this is a uh, toppling. Goliath. It's a wheat ale with uh, mango and apricot. All right. Well, it looks fantastic. I'm just going to take these things one at a time here. Um, we'll start with uh, the tot dog. Now, do you recommend this with uh, condiments, ketchup, mustard, no, cheese? Uh, I, when I eat a, a corn dog, I usually dip it in mustard, but when I eat tater tots, I dip it in ketchup. So. You got a little bit of both here. Well, fantastic. Best of both worlds, right? Yeah. Thank whoever it was that gave you this idea, because um, yeah, that came came out really good. Right. Can't wait to try that at the fair. Take a bite out of this guy. Wow, oh, another great uh, concoction you got there. All right. Um, yeah, just that blend of flavors, really nice. The jalapeno gets a little bit in there. It's just, yeah, really nice balance, um, balance of taste in there. Um, all right, all right. So glad you like it. We'll wash it down with a couple of these drinks here. Try out the Electric Empress. Oh yeah, that uh, goes down a lot like a champagne almost. Um, yeah, that's uh, really good. It matches my colors. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then I'll uh, give this beer a try. Mm, that one also, you know, I commented on the smell before we started recording and um, how good it smelled. And, Taste matches the smell. It's a fantastic uh, brew you've put together there. All right. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Mike, for standing here with me and allowing me to try these items. Where can people find you at the fair? Uh, we're at Lulu's Public House. We're in the West End Market. It's the only two-story brick building in the area. We've got a beautiful upstairs patio that overlooks the uh, midway. Come and see us. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching everybody. This special episode of Out to Lunch on State Fair is always a fun one to do. We're happy to bring it back this year too. I wanted to let you guys know about a potential opportunity. If you're interested in being involved in the Out to Lunch show, uh, you have a chance to sponsor it. If you're a business or nonprofit or even an individual, if you wanted, um, you have the opportunity to sponsor certain amount of episodes of Out to Lunch, in which case you would get to choose the restaurants we go to and choose the host. So you could potentially host yourself if you're interested in that. Uh, just get in touch with our marketing manager, Tim Domkey, and he'd fill you in on all the details about becoming a sponsor.